Hey guys, we're back. To another hallway. And we switch back to Harmon. And now I'm moving him. Yay, guy in wheelchair. To another large hall. What could be in here? Alright, tell me this isn't an epic looking room. And who could be in that chair? We're about to find out. Hey! It's that person I just killed. Let's see what happens when I shoot her. Just looking at you makes me sick. <laughs> yeah, you shoot her and she makes comments at you. Just looking at you makes me sick. Ah, uh, say something different. So you got me. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, we don't actually shoot her. We shoot this guy. Alright, prepare yourselves, guys. Oops. I guess my trick didn't work on you. Tricks are for kids, Coon. I'm an old man. <laughs> Tricks are for kids. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing has changed for 30 years. No matter how many times you try, the result will be the same. Ah, uh, yes. Like our chess games, you always seem to win. Do you know why? You tell me. Because you're a bad player. Booyah! <laughs> a new generation of children will bring order to this age. You're a good friend, but unfortunately, our interest is not mutual. We both have become burdened with so much, and we don't have time for fun anymore. No, <laughs> there's always time for fun. It's Friday night. Let's dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Harmon's got the monopoly on the one-liners in this game, I think. Alright. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to explain a little bit behind the plot here. Um... A lot of the things in this game are symbolic of other things, and Harmon and Kunlan here are no exceptions. Um, they are representative of the main conflict, of course, in, in this game, but um, they're also uh, symbolic of different cultures. Um, Harmon there, in his Western clerical attire, is symbolic of Western culture. And Kun Lan over there is symbolic of Eastern cultures. And the main theme of this game is the conflicts between East and West. Um, the West being uh, controlled by the United States and the East being controlled by Japan. Just to give you guys a little insight into this, because it's hard to pick up on a lot of this stuff when you're uh, playing through it or watching someone play through it. I had to actually read a plot synopsis to uh, understand it fully, but there's a lot of philosophy and symbolism in this game, so I'll try to enlighten you guys as we go along. And um, that glowy hand there that he has, that's called the God Hand. And remember I told you that uh, Harmon's gun's called the God Killer. And it's kind of, uh, I guess it's their uh, powers canceling each other out or something like that. So, uh, yeah, let's continue this cutscene by shooting his hand. And he caught the bullet. 
How cool is that? And he landed on the Space Needle. The size of the world has changed. It's changed to the size where you can control it with your hands, just like a PDA. The world will keep getting smaller. <laughs> Angel complete. All right, guys, first stage down. And we get to see how many heaven smiles we killed in that level. Oh, wow, 60. Pretty good. The day when laughter disappears from this world draws near. And our next stage is going to be Sunset. And we're going to save. And let's see this one. All right, guys. Sorry for another short video, but there's going to be a cutscene when we start this next stage. So next time on Let's Play Killer7, we start stage two. See you guys then.